In this Demon Souls remake build guide, I'm going to be covering my Holy Paladin build, which is a faith build that focuses on high magic damage as well as good survivability through miracles and HP regeneration. If you've been looking for a build that's extremely tough to kill and has something for just about every situation, then this build is for you. The Holy Paladin build uses a combination of miracles, spells, and extremely efficient weapons to hit the ground running and never look back. This Starelli Spear will carry you through a good chunk of the game and blessed weapons heal you over time. Alternating between the two allows you to always have the right weapon for the job, and there are some great options for blessed weapons. Additionally, there are times when you will want to two-hand your weapon, allowing you to carry a blessed weapon in your offhand as well. This means that if you're using a Star LA, then you will gain healing from Regenerator's Ring at the same time. And if you have two blessed weapons equipped, you'll gain even more healing. The starting class I chose for this build was Temple Knight, due mainly to its high strength and faith, but Knight is also not a bad option since it comes with a long sword and a better shield. The choice is up to you, and even Priest is not a bad option either. It mostly boils down to what you want to begin the game with and how much faith you want right away. One really great thing about this build is that it can do piercing, blunt, or slashing damage in addition to the magic damage that Istarelli and Blessed Weapons deal. Some enemies are extremely resistant to certain damage types and weak to others. For example, Istarelli really shines in Stonefang Tunnel where enemies are weak to both magic and piercing, while the Blessed Mace works very well in the Shrine of Storms. Learn when to use which weapon and swap back and forth as needed. Blessed Weapons provide HP regeneration over time beginning at plus 2 HP per second at plus 1 and ending at plus 6 HP per second at plus 5. This is good to know because you don't just get extra damage when you upgrade these weapons, but also valuable healing. This makes upgrading blessed weapons as quickly as you can even more of a priority than some other upgrade paths. Note that you must upgrade a weapon to plus 6 before you can begin the blessed upgrade path, and not all weapons can be blessed, so check the wiki for a list of those that can. Mr. LA uses colorless demon souls for its upgrades, so you likely won't upgrade it very quickly. And while you can get a couple of these fairly easily, you still need to give Blacksmith Ed the Searing Demon Soul before he'll do this. Try not to worry about upgrading a Starelli at the beginning of your playthrough and focus instead on increasing your faith for extra damage and getting a blessed weapon to plus 5. Make sure to attune more miracles as you place points into faith. You need to farm quite a bit with this build, so one great miracle to slot is evacuate. Kill all the depraved you need to, then just evacuate out and do your farming run again, saving you time. Starelli can be acquired if you have pure white world tendency in the Valley of Defilement area. This usually means that you must complete all three bosses without dying in body form, However, killing invading black phantoms will also increase your world tendency towards white as well. This means that if you have a friend or someone from the community, like on Discord, invade you a few times and let you kill them, you can obtain this in a matter of minutes once you've defeated Phalanx. Simply set a password and have them invade, and then you can go grab the spear very quickly. An added bonus is that you'll have white character tendency from doing this, increasing your damage and soul form by 20% as well. Once you have the Valley of Defilement at pure white world tendency, you need to progress forward until you reach the area with the plague rats below the filthy woman. On the cliff edge ahead, there will now be a ladder on the left-hand side just before the large depraved. Climb up it and make your way through more depraved and across the rope bridge. On the other side is a large depraved and some planks leading up to Estorelli and three more large depraved. Defeat them and grab the spear, or just run in and grab it before they kill you. The stats needed for the Holy Paladin build are Faith, Vitality, Endurance, and Intelligence. Faith is the primary stat of this build because both Estorelli and Blessed Weapons deal increased damage with high faith, and miracles are more effective as well. You'll want to get Faith to 24 as quickly as you can in order to use Estorelli as soon as you get it, which will be quite early on in the game. Vitality is needed for more HP because you don't want to be killed in one hit. You want to have enough HP that you can absorb at least one of most attacks in the game, allowing you to heal or regen HP. Endurance is needed in order to increase your stamina for more attacks and blocking, as well as increase your equipment load, allowing you to wear heavier armor. You won't need a ton of this right away, but eventually you want to take this up to 40. Intelligence is needed to increase the amount of mana you have so that you can cast more powerful miracles. Like Endurance, you won't need a ton of it, but you will need some in order to cast the best miracles. Your stat spread should look something like this in your first playthrough. Note that you don't need to invest in any strength or dexterity here unless it is to meet the requirements for the blessed weapon you have chosen. You will not meet the requirements for Estorelli, but the physical damage is so minimal that it's not worth doing, and because you will have over 24 faith, you will still deal full magic damage with it. Heal. This miracle will restore a good amount of HP to the player in exchange for 30 MP. Early on in the game, you'll likely use grass instead of this miracle, but you might find that you use it more and more as your intelligence increases. Antidote. This miracle is a great one to have early on, and you'll need it quite a bit in the Swamp of Sorrow. It loses much of its usefulness after this area, but you can sub it out later. Evacuate. This miracle is excellent for farming, and you'll need to farm both Faintstone and Hardstone most likely for this build. Once you finish your farming run, just pop it to return to the Nexus and then just travel back to the Archstone and begin again. No more running back. 
Cure. You'll likely replace the antidote with this miracle once you get it because it cures any ailment including bleeding and plague. It also doesn't take up any additional miracle slots, so it's a no-brainer. Regeneration. This miracle recovers some HP over time and is likely a better use of a slot than heal. You'll want to preemptively cast this before boss fights for extra regeneration, which will decrease the likelihood that you'll have to stop to heal. God's Wrath. This miracle does magic damage in a modest AoE that can often one-shot most enemies. It's very situational, but it can be devastating in PvP. If you like to co-op, this miracle is a great way to defend your host. Second Chance. This miracle revives you with 50% health upon death, making it the most powerful miracle in the game. You can only cast it once per area, but once may be just enough to get you through. In this section, we'll take a look at what equipment you need in order to play the Holy Paladin build effectively. Keep in mind that you'll likely change this up depending on what section of the game you're on, but this should serve to give you some idea of what setups you're looking for. First, let's take a look at early game. At the beginning of the game, you'll want to pick up and equip the Kling Ring as soon as you can to further increase your health and soul form. You'll likely be in soul form a good amount of the time, especially since you'll gain extra damage when doing so, so this extra bit will help keep you alive. The very first area you'll go after defeating the Phalanx is the Valley of Defilement. As I mentioned before, you'll need to get pure white world tendency here in order to acquire this Dorelle Spear, so use the method I recommended to get yourself invaded by a friend or a member of the community on Discord and bump it to pure white very quickly. Once that is completed, make sure to head back to the Nexus and jump off the top in order to get back in soul form before progressing, because if you die in body form in the Valley of Defilement, then you will lose your pure white world tendency. Then make your way forward and loot the Blessed Mace plus one, this will be the first blessed weapon you have, and you can upgrade it to plus 5 over time or opt for a different weapon type, the choice is up to you. But grab it regardless, as it will make this area much easier. The next thing you should grab in this area is the Saint Set, as it's fairly light and has modest protection. This will allow you to use two weapons in your right hand and a shield and talisman in your left hand and still be under 50% equip load so you can roll normally. You'll have to backtrack a bit from the blessed Mace plus 1 to get it, but not too much. Once you have the Saint Set, you'll make for the Istarelli, which is just up ahead up the ladder defeat the enemies around it and loot it. Equip it immediately and alternate between it and the Blessed Mace as necessary. Remember that you can block and attack at the same time while using a spear, so use that to your advantage. After you've defeated Leechmonger, you'll be able to pick up the Regenerator's Ring in the Swamp of Sorrow, healing you over time while equipped. The Swamp of Sorrow is a great place to use this ring, but you'll use it a lot even outside of it, so make sure not to miss this one. Next, defeat the Black Phantom on the other end of the swamp to gain three Feinstone Chunks since you will want these later to upgrade your Blessed Weapon. If you don't do it now, you'll have to come back later anyway. Further on in this area, you'll find the Filthy Woman again, and now she is selling Faintstone Shards. They are not cheap at 10k a pop, but farming souls can be easier than farming shards. However, if you'd rather not buy them, you can farm the Depraved in this area with the Green Aura for a decent chance at a shard. Also be sure to kill the Crystal Lizards in this area, as they can drop all types of Faintstone, pure included. The last thing you'll need to do in this area is defeat Garl Vinland and meet an Astrea in order to obtain the Ring of Sincere Prayer. This ring boosts miracle power significantly, but makes miracles cast a bit slower in return. Once you gain God's Wrath, you'll use this ring to boost its damage, so hang on to it until then. Once you finish the fifth Archstone, then you'll head to Stonefang Tunnel in order to unlock Blacksmith Ed. Once this is done, you'll be able to use him to upgrade your Blessed Mace or whichever Blessed Weapon you decide to use. Stonefang Tunnel is a great place to farm Hardstone and Sharpstone if you want to create different Blessed Weapons since you'll need to upgrade it to plus six first before you can begin the Blessed Upgrade path. Make sure to kill all the miners with bags and loot everything. The Crystal Lizards past the Armored Spider also give tons of these materials. You'll need to defeat Flame Lurker and give the Searing Demon Soul to Ed before you can upgrade a Starelle, so this should be your next priority once you've got your Blessed Weapon sorted out. You won't be able to upgrade it much yet, but you will max it out eventually. The next thing you'll do in this area is defeat the Dragon God in order to obtain Dragon Demon's Soul. This can be used later on to create the God's Wrath Miracle, which can do a ton of AoE damage. Once you finish with Stonefang Tunnel and all the bosses there, you'll want to head to Shrine of Storms and defeat Adjudicator and then free Saint Urbane not long afterwards. He will allow you to learn more miracles and you cannot get some of the ones listed without him. After he's been freed, progress onwards and defeat Old Hero and use the Hero Demon's Soul to get second chance from Saint Urbane in the Nexus. It takes two slots, but it's really, really good to have. The last thing you'll need to do is defeat the Tower Knight and head into the area after him. Find the Dregling Merchant there and buy the Knight Shield and Knight Sword, though the sword is optional. I love to use the Knight Shield with this build since you need colorless demon souls for Istarele or I'd suggest the Dark Silver Shield. The Knight Sword is also an excellent candidate for a blessed weapon should you prefer something other than the blessed mace. Note that you can come here sooner if you want to use this sword as your blessed weapon, but you should be able to farm enough Faintstone to make at least two blessed weapons without a lot of trouble. Final Tips Early on, always try to use your Heal Miracle when you need a big heal and use your Crescent Moongrass when you need a small one. This is the most MP efficient way to heal, and you don't want to waste MP. 
Remember to use the right weapon for the right situation. As I mentioned, some enemies are resistant to certain types of damage and you might be better suited with another. Test out your weapons and see which works best. Remember to keep your equip load at 50% or lower if possible if you want to roll normally. You don't have to do this with this build because of the amount of HP regen you have, but if you want to go for heavy armor, make sure you don't go over 100%. Increase your endurance if you need to. Lastly, if you like to PvP, you can upgrade Iron Knuckles using the Blessed Upgrade path and keep them in your left hand instead of a shield. This will allow you extra HP regen and still allow you to parry. They are also extremely light compared to the Adjudicator shield, and it cannot parry. Stay tuned for more Demon Souls build guides as we explore just what kind of builds you can make, and be sure to check out the Demon Souls wiki if you have specific questions about the game. As always, you can watch our Demon Souls review and getting started guide if you want to get going with Demon Souls Remake.